Hello fairy friends, it is Liz. You'll recall this vintage Simba doll from my recent box opening. And I have started on her already and I took her head off because she has so much hair. I don't want her body to get wet. And that was my first step, just to wash all of her glorious hair. Use new white rain shampoo tonight and tomorrow your hair will be sunshine bright. White rain White rain. Hope you enjoyed that little throwback uh, to a 50 shampoo commercial. But when I came into my studio this morning and I saw how um, bouncy her curls were, I couldn't help myself. It looked just like a shampoo commercial. More like from the 80s, but anyway. Um, her hair was gently brushed before I washed it last night just so I didn't make more tangles while washing it and then I just did some warm water and uh, baby shampoo and that worked really well and didn't need to do anything else with it because she didn't have any odors no cigarette smell or anything like that um, so really she was an easy cleanup I did remove her cheek and lip color um, that had faded um, to like a tannish color, which I know sometimes um, paints can do that if they're uh, faded by the sun. So that old paint has been removed and she has a fresh face here and is ready for her new lip and cheek color. So let's get started. I am opting to use my oil pastels. Um, you know that sometimes I use these, but a lot of times I go for my trusty acrylic paints. The acrylic paints, I'm really used to using those. Um, these ones are um, really good for types of vinyl that you need um, the color to get um, deeper into the vinyl. Um, and that's what the oil does, the oil um, pastels. Um, do it's just like an oil paint, but it's in uh, stick form, so you can control it. Or her vinyl isn't as soft as this vinyl right here. It's, I mean, and you can feel it when you're collecting dolls. I mean, I can't tell you what the chemical composition is here. I'm just, I'm not that knowledgeable at all. But her vinyl is um, uh, more of a rigid vinyl, and I do know sometimes over time. Age um, can do that. The age of the doll can play a part. She may very well have been more pliable. I don't know. She may have come out of the um, factory like this. I don't know. But, I'm, but I just have this impression that I'd, I'd like to go at it with the um, oil pastels. Now, how do I figure out how deep I want to go in the color and how... Um, how bright do I want the colors? Well, in a general rule of thumb for me, um, especially because I don't uh, redo these dolls to sell, so I'm not I don't I'm not concerned with making them look precisely the way that they came. Um, just that they are uh, repaired and in good shape and looking as cute as they came. Uh, that is. Um, okay with me even if it's slightly varied from how it looked so that's my thought process so um, say her color of her cheek was more along the lines of this color right here I probably I just I would hesitate to do that because when I'm redoing them I really want to find a happy little middle ground where I don't look like uh, my face paint is amateurish in the choice of color. Um, and I just want it to, to look natural as possible, even if it didn't come looking very natural. This is obviously very far from what you would think of when you think of an actual baby, but that's the look of this doll. That's her charm and that's her appeal. Um, if she, I don't have to do anything with her. She, her hair is drying, basically. She's air drying right now. But thankfully, I do not have to touch her cheeks or lips. And I do appreciate this look. You know, I hesitate sometimes because I don't want to look like I was the one to make the mistake. So, um, if it's slightly off sometimes, um, in the wrong direction, it looks like you goofed 
as uh, the doll restorer. If you pick a happy middle ground, like I said, then it kind of flies under the radar. You know, you just need a lip and a cheek color. And I really feel that no matter what time period, um, if it's for you now, just keep that in mind. If it's for you, the doll is for your collection. You're not having to meet anyone else's criteria. If it's for you and you pick a natural lip and uh, cheek color, you're not going to go wrong. No one's going to look at that and... Um, uh, be like, oh, what did you do? It's you, it's just a safer bet. So that's why I'm choosing these colors. Okay, I think we've given it enough thought here, and I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, cheek and lip color started, and I'll do this in time lapse. That way I can shorten this video a little bit. Okay, just to go over what it is that I did, um, I know you just watched it, but just in case, um, I did use a couple of different brushes, and um, they had different, um, I never know what to say. I always want to say rigidity, <laughs> but I should just say they're, some of them are firm and some of them are soft there. I did not have to get technical on that. <laughs> Um, and I did start out by putting the color onto my um, freezer paper and then brushing into it um, just to see. You want to start out with a little amount of color and build up. So you can't always go backwards as easily as you can build up the color. If you goof up um, by going at it, you know, you know full strength and you might um, have issues later so but then I went ahead and just got the color this is my usual technique is to just get the color off of the actual um, pastel and I did use um, q-tips and I did use a cosmetic sponge and the other product that I used was this Americana Dura Clear high gloss and this is good for all sorts of projects i use this for my polymer clay i use it to seal uh, acrylic paints and my oil paints and just to go over real quickly um i put a little bit of color here a little bit of color here here and here and here and then the lip color because i do want to keep it that um shade i don't want to rub off and I do want some gloss to the lips. Now, I don't know that she had gloss to her lips, but I really do like the look. And you will have to decide for yourself on this, whether or not you're going to need to seal it. Um, this actually absorbed pretty well, a lot better than I thought. This technique doesn't unfortunately work very well if you have any tiny scratches or gouges in the vinyl. Reason being is the color, um, the pigment gets trapped in there um, and it really um, will bring that uh, flaw and scratch to the forefront because the color um, gets inside there. So you really kind of have to figure out before you go to start it whether or not it's going to be something that you'll be able to do. Um, you might need to do, build up the color uh, more slowly and kind of um, pat down instead of using um, the brush and getting it into the crack. Sometimes using the sponge in this manner will keep the oil paint from, um, or oil pastel rather, um, from getting into the gouges. But this one, as I keep saying, I'm so pleased with her. She has behave so well I just put her hair in a little scrunchie her hair literally looks like my hair <laughs> every day um, but I'm not going to seal her face because the, that color 
I'll show you real quickly. And you'll have to decide for yourself. If this is a play doll, if it's just for you, um, then you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to take any wear and tear. You can look and see by rubbing with a clean cloth, a cloth or paper towel. I'm seeing a little bit of the color coming up, but not much. Uh, not for having just put that on. So I do not feel like I need to seal that. That's not going to come off anytime soon at all. She'll probably need some face color long after I have passed away. So next step is she is going to, whoop, she is going to get her body. Okay, her lips are all dry. So I can go ahead and work with her. Don't want to um, get too impatient and then ruin your work. So, and that usually takes, the sealer usually takes a little bit longer. So, and then here's her body. And it's, like I had said, it's in really great shape. I've already cleaned up the actual um, vinyl parts. Um, this did not have any smells and the stuffing was still really good. And that's what you have to evaluate for yourself as to whether or not it's in um, a good shape enough to just redress. And she is. And even though she didn't have any smells, I did spray her body with Lysol last night um, and let that air dry. So what I'm doing is putting in her new zip tie. Put it, uh, I put it in and start it before I put the doll head on make sure especially with a doll like this with so much hair that the hair is not going to get into that and then you'll have to decide how tight you want it and it'll be according to um, how much stuffing um, how the doll body is made how easily you would like um, it to be posed that's pretty tight you give it a good tug to see and it can turn really easily as well. So I like this. I'm going to go ahead and just a couple more because I see a gap. And then I usually trim a little bit off. And you can use scissors. And then I take um, fingernail clippers and I make sure I get all the way to the edge. And that's why we trim before we use the clippers in that way. We can get all the way to the end. So I'm going to head, go ahead and dress her. And I have this romper that I got from the thrift store. And it didn't look like much until I um, ironed it. And here are the cute little sleeves. And it does look like you, when you go to choose your dress, you do have to kind of look to see how the body's constructed. Um, how this came, it would, her shoulders um, would have shown. Um, but after I gave it a good ironing, it did wonders for that and made the sleeves come out. And I can't stress enough. Sometimes when we get things from the store, it's not even ironed out. And I do take things home and iron them. And sometimes for things that are small like this, I'll use this little iron that I have and it's just the the shape of a big iron and then you can get into those little crevices but just wanted to show you that and it does have snaps at the bottom but I'm gonna go ahead and just dress her put her legs in and not I'm not gonna unsnap it it's loose enough that we can do that and it might be slightly big on her. I forgot to say where this came from. This is just one U and it's Carter's and it's six months. And if I haven't said this in this video, this is the a Simba doll. And this is six months. And uh, it looks vintage. I, I think I mistakenly said this is vintage. Carter's has some things that really do look vintage. So, as you can see, you can see her sleeve just a little bit. Place her face down so I can snap this in the back. There we go. And it is just a touch long, but I don't really think that it 
looks bad. And then when we go to sit her down, the elastic, this, the elastic um, is just a little bit bigger. And she would look really cute in sandals. But I don't have sandals for her. So we are going to go with these doll shoes. Um, that I just did have. I have two or three pairs of these in packages um, that I inherited from my neighbor across the street. They're a little bit narrow, so but they will work. And these are the zero to six months socks I can get at Walmart. We call it Wally World. And I was playing with these and trying to see, the, the only problem I find with these is that the ankle part can tend to be a little bit thicker than what I like. So I try to make it as flat as possible and then decide. So an option, if you really wanted to, would be to cut cut them shorter, um, to cut down on that bulk, because once I get these shoes on, that might look extremely bulky. I'm going to go ahead and cut a length off here, and you would want to um, finish the edges, but for this, just to get her dressed up here, I'm going to go ahead and put them on her. And these aren't exactly the right size, so what I do is I lift them all the way up to get that tight. And then the seam I want to be down here, because with, with the dress shoes you can really see it when it starts to bunch up. I know tights do that too, um, and you can work with them. The socks are a little bit harder to work with because they're thicker. Um, I don't really have much luck with the tights. Almost as bad as all the tights I bought for my daughter um, that kept uh, getting runs in them. Um, and those are the lightweight ones, those are the ones I'm speaking of. So, and then you just fold those down and kind of give it a little squeeze to get it back in place. And if you fold them, then you don't see that raw edge. So, let's move on really quickly. Don't want this to be very long in her little dress shoes and socks. And next, let us take down her glorious hair here and decide how we would like for this to be styled. Now, I was considering putting a bonnet or hat on her, but really one of the great things about this baby is her glorious hair. So I don't really want to hide that. I have a lot of dolls that do not have enough hair. And so they do get bonnets <laughs> to hide that they don't have hair. So I think that she, to add a little bit of um, variety to my collection, I really think that she should have her hair um, out and showing. I have these little um, hair elastic or the, the smaller kind and I think I will do she had a barrette in her hair um, oop, got a little, she had a barrette in her hair and half up and half down and I think I like that because it still shows her curly hair but we'll do an elastic and we'll do a half up half down and there's different ways you could do it. You could take all the hair here, or if um, she has some, if your doll has some thinning and you don't want to do that, you can just take one section from the front to bring it back. It's just, I mean, this is all self-explanatory. Certain hairstyles flatter us, and while others don't, some of them don't really look very flattering on us, and then some are okay, but there's something even better that you could do. And it may not make any sense to use these clip-on bows since her hair is secured in the back, but it just looks like she needs something cute 
on either side um, that you can see from the front that matches her outfit. So I'm going to put these clip-on bows and you can get these almost everywhere. Now I'm just giving it a another gentle brushing and a little bit of twirling to get the curl back in before our pictures. That'll do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, this little makeover from start to finish. And just as a reminder, here's what she looked like before with her faded cheeks and lips. She didn't have too many problems. Um, she did need her hair cleaned up and styled, but I think she looks tons better. And this is just one of those makeovers that you can do pretty quickly. And it's very satisfying, especially if you're someone like me that has some projects that are ongoing, it's good to have one that you can look at and say, yeah, I got that finished and I got her cute again. Anyway, if you found this useful or entertaining, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you do, you can hit the bell button and that way you'll know when new videos pop up. And if you're watching this, this Easter weekend, I hope you have a beautiful weekend. I do appreciate you guys spending some time with me. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.